I'm Mike Wagner, a professor in the political science department at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I'm sure many of you have seen the commercials on television right now urging you to call your Congress member or senator to either oppose or support health care reform. This is nothing new in American politics, but it certainly has become more prevalent in recent years. Many of you might remember the original health care reform debate starting in the 1940s and 50s under President Harry Truman. Others of you might remember the Harry and Louise ads that were on television during the 1990s when President Clinton tried to reform health care. Here, various companies uh, paid the actors, playing the characters of Harry and Louise, to sit around a kitchen table and talk about their lives and talk about how health care reform was a dangerous and bad idea. Ironically, those same actors are now in commercials supporting health care reform some t 15 to 20 years later. And so it's interesting how some of these things go around. On the other hand, many of the advertisements are quite uh, extremely positive or extremely negative in nature. The positive ones will make a glowing case for health care reform, talking about how you won't have to change your doctor and everyone will uh, be covered and it won't cost uh, the government uh, any money to go into the national deficit. Whereas commercials that oppose health care reform will say it's a government trillion dollar boondoggle that will make you lose your doctor, have less control over your care, and uh, bankrupt the country for years to come. Both commercials urge you to then to call your senators and tell them to either support or oppose the health care reform. The question is, do these ads actually work? Well, it's much easier to stop major reform than it is to start it. And so negative advertisements seem to be a little bit more effective in these kinds of debates, as well as in just regular old elections, in terms of uh, getting people excited about stopping something from happening. It's much harder to motivate folks to do something that would cause a major change, like health care reform would be. On the other hand, a lot is made out of these ads when there's not a whole lot of evidence that they really persuade most of us to do much about it. It takes a little bit of work to send an email or make a phone call to a member of Congress. It doesn't take any work to sit and watch television and watch these advertisements. And so most of us tend not to be that affected with respect to the actual goals of these interest groups, which is to call your member of Congress or email them to get them to vote in one way or another on a piece of legislation. And perhaps the most interesting thing about these advertisements is many of them cover up who they're really working for. For instance, there's an organization called Citizens for a Better Medicare that sometimes oppose health care reform and sometimes support it depending upon the issue. Citizens for a Better Medicare is a conglomeration of pharmaceutical companies and not really a group of citizens at all. This kind of lobbying is called astroturf lobbying, where a group is given a name that sounds grassroots, like Citizens for a Better Medicare, but like AstroTurf, it's fake grass, where corporations are doing the advertising instead. So it's very careful at the end of these advertisements to look at who paid for them and to look them up and see who they really represent.